<laughs> the electric leather tutorial. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not doing this in the bathtub. Well, let's start off by creating a new composition. How about that? And I'll call it underscore main because my main comp here. And 1920 by 1080, I'm going with 60 frames per second. And 10 seconds should be more than enough. Now we want to put some text in here. So I'll click my text tool. Let's do something like that. And I can center this here in my align section. And I'm gonna put this in the middle. And that's pretty much it. Now I wanna pre-compose this text layer so it's easily editable. And I'll right click on it, go to pre-compose, and I'll call this edit text. And now what we wanna do is go into effects and presets and let's find our turbulent display. So just start typing turbu and Turbulent display, so I'll drag and drop onto the layer. Now what I want to do is reduce these values. So I'm going to go amount uh, and size. I'm going to change those size about um, 15, 20, maybe, um, yeah, 15 there. This one I'll bring up fairly high amount. I think maybe that's a little too high. Something like that will work. This looks a little bit weird but we're gonna clean it up in the next step. And that's um, CC composite. So CC, COM, and you have CC composite. And we could just actually drop this right in here underneath. I'm gonna turn, um, turn this from in front to exclusion. And now you'll see this um, little inverting effect. I'm not, also, I'll turn off RGB only, and that will kind of bring back the uh, the outline of the original shape a little bit. All right, we're making progress. Now what I want to do is uh, change the uh, change some of these settings here. Actually, to make our life easier, I want to I want to animate these, but I want to use expressions to um, make it go a little bit easier. So I'm gonna hold down Option and click on my offset turbulence here. This is two values, so I'll press the uh, sorry the left and right brackets, and then just arrow key backwards to go in between them. So I'm gonna do for the X value, time asterisk 1500, maybe 1400. Let's try 1400. And then you do a comma and then you set your Y value. So we don't want it to move on the Y value. So we'll just make that zero. And let's give this a, the old playback. Okay, so this is pretty good. It's going fairly fast, but I still can see it's moving from left to right. And I just want to get to the point where it's it's almost going so fast we can't see it move, but not quite that much. And I think that's the the point uh, that we want to be at. At least for this text, different fonts might vary, might have to change your settings. But the next thing I want to do is complexity. So this is going to be um, for adding variety. So I'm going to hold down Option, and click this. I'm going to use Wiggle. So you, you just start typing Wiggle, and then you'll get it. Uh, highlight here you can double click on it just start typing four comma four and click somewhere in an empty spot so we could accept that you could kind of see already what it's doing this gives us kind of this a little bit of a like a pulsating sparking effect as the complexity goes up we get these finer little details now I want to uh, do one more thing just to get a little extra variety and that is evolution so if I option click that I will um, well, we got a wiggle here. Let's just copy that and command C to copy, command V to paste. I want larger numbers. I'm going to go with the speed of maybe like 15 and a value of um, 360. And let's click outside to see how this looks. All right, so now we're, we're getting something that, that looks a little bit less like um, just default turbulent displays. And this animation is helping it look a little bit more natural. So one one more thing before I jump out of this comp is I wanna clean up the, the outside edges. So what I'll do is type, um, if I can highlight this thing, SETM, and you should find set matte. And we can drop this in here. It'll set the matte to the, the original layer. Now we should have something that looks a bit like this. Okay, so let's make this window bigger. You don't have to, but I just wanna right click on here and go to pre-compose. And I wanna make sure move all attributes is checked on. We'll call this and press okay. So 
what I want to do is add another turbulent display. So I've typed it in here already. Turb U, that's all you really need to type and you'll get it. Drop this onto the layer. So I'm going to bring the, the size as low as it can get. And this is going to be a real subtle effect. So let's zoom in to 100%. And you can see if I turn this on and off, you can't really see much here. The, the amount is going to be a factor. So let, let's bring this up here. This is, this is the kind of look that we're going for. So what I want to do is uh, animate the offset. Let's start off with that option. Click the offset. For the offset, two values. So let's start off with the brackets. Time times 100, comma. We don't want anything for the Y, so that Y will make zero. And let's just see. Okay, yeah, I like that. Let's mess with the evolution a bit here. So I'll go with option, click that. And for this, I'll do time times maybe 500 and see how that looks so evolution will just help to add a little bit of variety and let's add some variety to the amount so i'm going to option click on that i want to be able to control this value and not just have a random number so i'm going to type value plus and we'll do a wiggle wig and then just double click this here and let's do uh, 50 comma 100. So this will give a, a random amount, but we still can access this slider. So that's kind of fun. All right, let's see how this works. Maybe I'll bring this up a little bit more. So you can see I could still change this value. If I bring this slider way up, you'll see I get that and it'll still Let's just slide through here. It's got this high number, but it's still doing the wiggle. So 50 is the speed, 100 is the value. And uh, so I want to bring this down. So we got randomness and we can control it a bit. This is giving us the type of look. It's got some really fast, it's moving at the speed of electricity, but we could still see kind of this movement from left to right. Let's break this up a little bit more by adding a CC vector blur and I'll drop this onto my layer. I could even just drop it here. I could have even double clicked on it, but I want to change a few settings. I'm going to set this to about 150, 160, 140-ish. Let's go with 140. This is going to look better, trust me. I'm going to bring this up a bit here and map softness. I want this probably about zero or very close to it. And I'm going to go from this lightness i'm going to switch to the red channel and if i zoom in here you could see when i turn this off and we're just getting a little bit more distortion helping to make things look more natural let's go to cc composite i'm going to drop this in this is well let's turn this off first and this is going to go off screen i know already because it's a huge list uh, but i want to change the composite original from in front to silhouette alpha and hopefully we've got enough room. All right, right at the bottom of the list, well, of the screen here is silhouette alpha. And now we could bring this back to size and we can play this to see how it's looking. I could probably just render about a second and let it loop. So that's the look that we're getting. If I just do a check on the transparency by clicking on this little checkerboard icon, I can see that this is actually a pretty subtle effect. It, it's almost completely transparent for the most part. It looks okay on a black background, but uh, we can boost up this transparency. Let's collapse this here. And I'm gonna use a M-A-T-T-E. You'll find Matt Choker. Yeah, here it is, Matt Choker. So we'll drop that Matt Choker in here. And this is gonna do the opposite of what we want as long as this number is in the positive. So let's drag this into the negative. And as we do that, now if I turn it off and on, you'll see we're getting some of that transparency when we're pulling it back in. And you can see we're getting a little bit more visibility now. So that's a nice little boost to the effect. Another thing that I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna collapse this for now. I'm gonna collapse this layer for now also. I'm gonna make a duplicate of this, so I'm gonna press Command D. And this one that's behind or beneath, let's find its um, turbulent displace. Let's go for the size 
and bring that up. Now you gotta be pretty subtle because this is gonna start to look bad. So uh, if you hold down command as you drag, you'll get finer increments. And I just want something slightly bigger than the original. This is gonna add a little bit of variety. So now we can take a look and see what it's doing. You can look at the complexity too. If we want, we could try and bring that up or down. Let's see how this plays. Okay, I like the way that it looks. It, it's kind of making it seem a little bit slower now. And, and we could also turn off the matte choker on this if we wanted to make it a little bit more subtle. But I'm going to leave it on. And I'm going to um, select this layer, press UU. That'll reveal all of our expressions. We want to find the turbulent displays. Value, time. Okay, so the offset here, time. Let's set this to maybe 300. Let's see how this plays. So that looks good. Let's take this layer and collapse it to clean things up a bit. Right click now, go to new adjustment layer, it's somewhere in here. With this adjustment layer, let's put it on top of our other two layers. And I want to go and find my lightning effect. So L-I-G-H-T-N should get you close enough and you could find your advanced lightning here. Let's drop it onto this layer. Obviously, we don't want this. So let's hit composite on original and we could see the original. We don't want blue, so let's go to the glow settings. Click on our glow color, let's make it white and let's make it less intense. So I'm gonna bring down maybe the opacity a bit, the uh, glow radius a bit. Just a, a nice subtle glow is all we need. I'm gonna go into expert settings and turn this down complexity to one. Let's zoom out a bit here so we can see everything. We also have our, we have origin, which is this thing here, and we have direction, which is this thing here. So it's pretty obvious what those do based on their names and what you're seeing on screen. But what I wanna do is change this from direction to something called anywhere. And uh, now this doesn't really have an effect on the direction, but it does have an effect on the clipping. If I bring it too close to the origin, we're gonna get that clipping. So I'm gonna zoom out pretty far and move this way out here in space so that we never have to worry about that. Now, this is a pretty boring lightning. Let's, let's change some more settings. I'm gonna go from linear, I'm gonna go to spline and this is gonna give me a more curvy line and forking. Let's get some forks in here. And now you can see this is the, the look that we get and it's completely independent from the letters. Let's make it interact. So we go to alpha obstacle and I'm just gonna hold down shift and drag this till it's negative 100. And now you can see when it's close to the letters, it is kind of conducting with them, connecting, conducting. And when it's inside, you can see it's also basically like electricity. So it, it's, not, it's not doing anything while it's not moving. Uh, but if I start to animate this, it's going to look more interesting. Also, um, I still want a little bit more detail in here. So let's take the fork strength and let's bring that all the way up. So now all these branches are about the same brightness. Fork variation will make some lighter and some darker. Core drain will kind of do um, what you would expect it to do. Termination threshold, let me see, uh, is this something? Yeah, let's leave this all the way at 100 and minimum fork distance. Let's bring this down so we could get forks coming out right away. Now let's take decay, let's bring that all the way down and turbulence, let's see what happens when we bring the turbulence up. So now we're, we're getting something interesting with that higher turbulence. There's not much else to change. We could look at complexity. When I start to bring this up, you're gonna get these uh, wiggly lines. Two might be the most we want. Let's try three. Yeah, I think two or maybe even three. We got a lot of forks. Let me see, where are, where's our position here? Okay, so it's over here. So what I would like would be to have it over on this side and then shoot over on this side really fast and kind of switch between the two so we get some variation. Go to our origin, option click. I want to add a wiggle for my X value. I'm just going to type in value for my Y value. But since we're doing it that way, we need to use indexes. I'll show you what that is in a second. So I'll do with my left bracket, right bracket, go in between and start typing wig and I can hit tab to accept that. This will go with four comma, let's try 10, 10,000. So it's starting in the middle. 
and now it can move to the left 5,000 and the right 5,000. So that's somewhere way off the screen here. And uh, that's what I want. And now I just need to make sure that I finish this. So we need to tell After Effects that this is indeed the first value. So I have to do another left bracket. And you can see when I type that, it gives me a left and right, puts my cursor in the middle. So I could just type zero. And then after that, comma, so I got, uh, basically this is what we're working with. This is the wiggle expression and then no punctuation after it, just a bracket with a zero and then the comma. So then we know after this comma, we're going to be typing in the, the Y, the second value or the whole, the vertical. I'll just go a space value and then I'll do a left bracket and I'll type this time one and click outside and hopefully we don't have any typos. Okay, good. So we got a wiggle and we start off with, with the, the brackets because we have two values and for some reason when we start doing stuff like wiggle and this value we need to put these numbers here so this is the zero for the first one one for the second one hopefully that makes sense and let's just play this and see how it looks so it's kind of on one side on the other side every once in a while it'll kind of be inside one of the letters for a split second and let's just play this and see. Somewhat interesting, except it looks just frozen in, in time here. Let's take a look at what we can do to fix that. Conductivity state. So you see when we animate this, it starts to move a little bit. Let's do a option click on the stopwatch for conductivity state. And let's do a time, let's, let's time asterisk one. And let's just see if this does anything interesting for us. Yeah, that, that's, that's pretty good. We could always take a look at these numbers here. If we want, we could set this from a speed of four to a speed of one and see if that's anything more interesting. So this number, it's traveling a far distance. So even though the speed is low, uh, the value for this first one is low, it still jumps from left to right pretty quickly. And we can kind of see that, but you can see it's, it's a little bit slower. Let's try 0 0.5, 0 0.5 comma. If I could see it too clearly as it travels across, I'm gonna speed that up, but we gotta play this back in real time. Yeah, that's maybe a little too slow. Let's split the difference, leaning towards a little bit faster. Hopefully that does the trick. Yeah, so it's just a little bit faster than what you would notice for traveling left to right. Now that that's pretty much the effect. The last thing I would do would be to, um, we've got a glow on the lightning, but we don't have a glow on these two layers. Let's, let's make sure we're clear here. This is our lightning adjustment layer. Now I'll just select this one and right click new adjustment layer. And this one we'll call glow and probably can guess what we're going to do here. Glow. Uh, also make sure if this is not 32 bit option or alt click on it a couple times, one time until you get to 32 bits because glow definitely needs it. And we'll drop our glow onto our glow adjustment layer. This is a bit much. So all small radius. Let's adjust the thresholds higher and take the intensity down and still let's go with 0.5. Oops, that's 0 0.0. 0, 0 0.0 never gives you much. 0.5. So we're, we're boosting it up a little bit. So this will be our first glow. So select this, do a command D, duplicate that glow. And this one, I'll give it a larger radius. This will be our kind of big overall lighting effect. And um, that actually might be good as it is. You could try adjusting the uh, threshold if you want it to be making the darker areas glow too. Intensity. I don't know if this is great, but let's just give this a play, see how it looks. Yeah, I, I think that second glow is a little bit too much. Let's go in here, maybe take the, raise the threshold and uh, let's, let's bring the radius up. Let's give this kind of a softer look, see how that's working. Yeah, that, that might do it. Okay, so I think that looks good. I, I'm happy with that result and uh, we we have a glow on the lightning if you want though the uh the glow that's on the letters to also affect the lighting is really simple just drag this adjustment layer above the lightning adjustment layer and um you know put on a pair of sunglasses because that's pretty bright so we can just go back to the lightning and adjust its glow if we wanted it to be a little bit more intense 
So let me bring the opacity up here. And now we have a, a little bit more control over that. Let's take a look at this uh, full screen. So that is how we create our electrical text. And don't forget, this is still live editable text. So you could just double click on your edit text layer and type something else and go back to your main comp. It will be live and updating, or maybe you just don't even like letters. You're more of a picture person. You could hide the text layer, click off it, and copy and paste the logo from Illustrator, or just draw one by hand, which I'm gonna try and uh, do poorly here. So I'll just do, this will be my lightning bolt, terribly drawn logo. So if you, if you have a crooked lightning bolt for a logo, this is perfect because it will update and basically the world is your electric oyster.